Hello, my fellow Glock shooting enthusiasts. I'd like to invite you on a cleaning adventure. This is a first time experiment I'm doing to get my Glock 27 completely cleaner than it was from the factory. I'm going to strip it of all oil, carbon, residue. Um, it should just be bare parts when I get done. And what I'm going to use here is the Slip 2000 Carbon Killer. And this is an expensive product. It costs almost a dollar an ounce. This is a 16 ounce container and I believe it was around $14. And the reason I'm using this instead of what I normally use, which is Simple Green, is because I've through experimenting I found that this is actually quite a bit better. It's worth the extra money. As long as you don't go through too much of it. So all I'm going to do is uh, coat the parts and let them soak but I, I do want to completely disassemble it and after I'm done soaking the parts I'm not gonna I'm gonna brush them but I'm not gonna spend a lot of time trying to get them completely clean like I normally do with the simple green I'm basically just gonna get the stuff on them let them sit for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna give them an ultrasonic rinse and that's gonna be the difference here and the reason I'm doing this is you can clean with an ultrasonic cleaner in products like this. There's products that are water-based or non-water-based and a lot of them cost at least $50 a gallon and I don't want to go through that much. If it costs that much to clean my guns it's gonna discourage me from using that method a lot. So I'm looking for an intermediate cleaning method that will take advantage of my ultrasonic cleaner without costing me a fortune. You know, the machine cost enough the way it was. So I'm going to disassemble these parts and um, I'll put everything in a container. I'm going to leave the uh, firing pin assembly together. That'll save me some time. This thing was, uh, it just got a cursory cleaning. It wasn't deep clean. It was clean like when you how you do it when you are done shooting and you just want to get it back in the safe. Uh, it's not filthy dirty, but there is residue in here. You can see on the feed ramp, there's just a little bit of uh, ash and you can see some gunk in the uh, chamber a little bit. And the bore isn't shiny clean. Actually, I'm kind of surprised this thing made it into storage that dirty. It must have been one of those days I had a ton of guns to clean and I just kind of zapped through them. But I'm going to do the magazine here too. Okay, now I'll put all the parts in this dish. And I'm just going to pour some of this Slip 2000 Carbon Killer in there. Actually, I think I'll just pour the whole container in there. And I can always just pour it back. Put some nitrile gloves on. Now, this uh, Slip 2000 is a water-based cleaner, just like Simple Green. And it's not going to hurt my skin if I get it on there, but I prefer to wear these gloves because it really dries out your skin. And I have a problem with that the way it is because the line of work that I do my hands are grungy all the time. I'm constantly cleaning, uh, washing them, and they get really dry. So I'm just going to, I'm doing this just to coat them. I'm not going to scrub them with this. This is coated. I'll just give it a little touch up there. Good enough. And I want to get this down in the mag well and everything. Sometimes these, the checkering on these Glocks, 
especially the RTF2s will get a lot of grunge in them and it's nice to clean that out and I think the ultrasonic cleaner is going to be good for that and this should get all the lint out of everything from carrying and all the uh, combustion products, the ash and all the residue from firing, get that out of there make sure I got the channel saturated okay uh, the rest of this stuff I'm sure is good all right 10 minute soak and we'll give it an ultrasonic rinse this is my Crest ultrasonic CP 1200D it's not necessary to use a machine this big this is primarily for cleaning brass now we're going to take these parts and put them in these 600 milliliter beakers and the reason I'm using these is because they're glass you can see through them yeah I realize they don't fit all the way I'm just gonna turn them over the barrel is the part I'm most curious about because I want to know if that'll actually clean the metal right down there in the rifling normally when I do this I'm just going to be using an auxiliary pan that'll lure in there so I won't have to pull the parts out and turn them over like I'm going to have to now okay this is room temperature because I want to know if I can do this without having to go through heating the tank every time because that takes time and I'm going to set the uh, time here for I'm just going to go four minutes and see what happens this looks pretty clean I don't think I'm gonna have to give it any more but I want to check that barrel that's gonna be the thing that really determines how this is going and it looks pretty clean and if it can clean it in just a few minutes I'm holding up to a light to the light and it looks shiny clean uh, that's impressive this is the bucket that I've used uh, for years for cleaning my Glocks, I took and drilled 1 16th inch holes in the bottom of one of these Rubbermaid shoe boxes. And I'll just take all my parts and dump them right in there. And those holes are small enough, I don't have to worry about losing the smallest parts. And now I can do a hot rinse and the water will just flow right through the bottom without losing anything down the drain. For the rinse cycle I'll use my toothbrush just to make sure everything gets off there. Actually you know what, I've got an ultrasonic cleaner, I don't have to do that. Yeah, I'll just let this thing do all the work. And I'm going to use the glass so we can watch what's happening. And I'm going to use distilled water, even though I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I just want to get a spot free rinse here. I'm not going to degas my distilled water either. Okay, you got to get every little pin and spring that firing pin safety spring is the 
the bugger if you lose it. Okay, this should be interesting. I'm anxious to see if any dirt comes off. Let's give it a four minute rinse cycle. a good sign there's no dirt coming off because it would look like uh, little clouds coming off the parts if there was any dirt left whatsoever so I got a feeling this method actually works right there on the slide I'm noticing a little cloud coming off but it looks like that it's left over uh, cleaning solution it's not black or gray. Turn this over now. Okay, inside this box should be an entire Glock 27, hopefully, if I'm really lucky. And now we're going to do the drying process. It's just a simple matter of laying the parts out on a towel, and you could actually let them sit in the sun. You could lightly hit them with a hair dryer. If I did it with a hairdryer, I'd probably want to hold them in my hand so I knew I wasn't getting the polymer too hot. Uh, I like the air compressor method. You want to make sure you don't blow your parts all over the shop though. The part I'm most concerned with here is the barrel. I want to see if there's anything left over as far as copper falling. I'm going to see if I can get anything out of there using some copper solvent. I'm going to use the good stuff. Any copper falling left over will turn this patch blue with the butcher's bore shine. Yeah, nothing's coming through. I would have already seen it if there was copper left over. Yeah, this is where I should be wearing my nitrile gloves. This is pretty nasty stuff. But you can see that there's basically nothing on there. The barrel's clean. When you clean a Glock to this level, you're going to see all the scratches that you didn't know were there. The scuffs from holstering and all that. Uh, it's because there's virtually no oil on the gun. Handling this, even your skin oil will make those disappear. Uh, some people will freak out when they use uh, the oil remover and they think they ruined the finish on their gun, but that's not really the case. You're just seeing what it looks like without any trace of oils on it. If these weren't completely, absolutely dry, it really wouldn't bother me that much. That's why I only use this cleaning method with Glocks for the most part, uh, because they're so much more rust resistant than even stainless steel that I don't mind having the thing a little bit damp when it goes back together. I do dry them as much as I can though because I want the parts to take oil. And that's the good thing about getting it really clean like this because you've taken away every trace of, uh, of dirt. That is very clean. You know, it's hard to get a gun that clean just with uh, conventional cleaning methods. But actually, you know, do you need an ultrasonic cleaner to do this? No, you don't. All you need is a toothbrush and a little bit of elbow grease. The ultrasonic cleaner just makes it easier. 
This can be your cleaning method if you like, but I don't recommend that you do it very often. Certainly not every time you shoot. And that's because if you do a complete disassembly of your Glock um, too, uh, you know, too frequently, eventually you're going to uh, wear these holes and they're not going to hold the pins anymore. And you're probably going to wonder how often is uh, acceptable. For me, I probably do this about once or twice a year. It's just fun. It's cool to see a, your Glock in a uh, factory clean condition. Factory clean before they even oiled it. Okay, we're ready for lubrication now. I'm going to use the Slip 2000 Extreme Weapons Lubricant. And now that these parts are completely clean, it's going to take this stuff really well. I'm going to put one drop up here where the barrel hood rides in the slide. I'm going to spread this around to the four rails. You know, because this is totally dry, you want to make extra sure you, you get some right there where the trigger bar meets the connector. And I'm just going to put a drop right in there. This is probably too much, but that'll be good. And the barrel, we're going to put one drop here. And we'll make sure some gets here in the lug. There now. When's the last time you saw your Glock look this clean? Isn't that nice? So once again, don't freak out if you notice that your frame shows uh, scratches and stuff. It'll, it'll look kind of whitish wherever the scratches are. Uh, this one is actually not too beat up, but if you take an older Glock and you do this treatment to it, you remove all the oil, you're going to see white there and you're going to think that you did something to permanently alter the looks of your firearm and you actually didn't. Because as soon as you get a little oil, even just from your hands on it, that goes away. So this gun is 100% ready to carry. And once again, I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching my channel. This is a lot of fun communicating with everybody and uh, conducting ourselves in an uh, appropriate manner for everyone to see. Thanks a lot for watching.